Everyone, please welcome to the stage, Colonel Paul Calhoun. Energy is fundamental to human society. Our collective ability to generate, store, and distribute energy defines the upper limits of our technology and productivity. As a result, breakthroughs in energy technology can have a significant cascading impact. I believe the next leap forward in energy distribution will leverage wireless power beaming to create a dynamic, adaptive, speed of light energy web. This is the internet for energy, harnessing resilient, multi-path networks to flow energy from abundant sources to energy-starved consumers. So imagine with me for a moment a world without power cords, a world where cars recharge while driving down the freeway, a world where we have access to new, clean and abundant energy sources unlocked through more flexible distribution, a world where expeditionary energy networks can be rapidly deployed after natural disasters. Though that world is still in the distant future, we are taking steps now to make it a reality. Now, the military faces particularly acute energy challenges that are driving this innovation. We often must operate far from established energy infrastructure and rely on liquid fuels that require precarious supply lines. As a C-17 pilot, I flew dozens of combat missions, airdropping barrels of JP-8 fuel to forward operating bases in the mountains of Afghanistan. Those missions were expensive and dangerous, and that was in a relatively permissive environment. As we consider delivering fuel into the highly contested environments we may face in the future, that status quo is simply unacceptable. We believe the next energy revolution will be enabled by the energy web. It will dramatically compress transport timelines and resiliently provide distributed energy to consumers in air, on land, on the sea, undersea, and in space. Now, this all sounds great, but how do we get there? Uh, now we're going to take a look at the current state of the art in power beaming and explore the next immediate steps that DARPA wants to take to achieve this vision. Power beaming sounds exotic but it's actually the exact same physics that we're familiar with from wireless communication. You take a power source, you convert that power to a propagating wave, typically electromagnetic, send it through free space, collect it through an aperture, and then convert it back to electricity. In your cell phone, for example, that electricity is used as a signal that encodes voice or data. For power beaming, that converted electricity is used directly for power. Point-to-point -point power beaming has been successfully demonstrated using a variety of transfer methods. These include laser and microwave power beaming that you can see behind me. Recently, we've also been exploring acoustic power beaming. Now, these demos prove that it's feasible, but also highlight some of the ongoing challenges. First, these previous demos are custom built to work with a particular transmit and receiver pair. Generally, they are not suitable for use in a larger, scalable network. Second, conversion efficiencies remain a major challenge. In a multi-hop network, if you try and convert from a propagating wave back to electricity, back to a propagating wave at each node, you quickly accrue unacceptable losses. Each one of these conversions is relatively inefficient, and multiplying them across the chain is impractical. The critical missing element to overcome these challenges is effective power beaming relays. So this is where DARPA is focused. An effective optical power beaming relay must do three things. An effective op it must efficiently redirect energy without conversions. It must correct wavefront aberrations to maintain a tight beam for long range. And it must selectively harvest some of the energy to power itself. These relays also enable high altitude transmission, which is up to 50 times more efficient than propagating through the thick, turbulent lower atmosphere. So this high altitude optical power beaming layer will provide the long range, high throughput backbone for the energy web. For short range distribution to many devices, that last tactical mile, Radio frequency or microwave relays provide a good solution. These are more effective through weather and are easier to operate around objects and people. Together, the optical and RF relays provide the key components necessary to begin building out the energy web. Now, the energy web will also enable a new class of small distributed platforms. Currently, if a platform needs to have long range, endurance, or significant weapons delivery capability, it must be physically large. This is because we think of platforms as containers that must carry with them the energy needed to complete a mission. These large platforms are expensive and therefore purchased in limited quantity. The energy web allows us to think of platforms as conduits rather than containers. It no longer matters how much an ener uh, energy a platform can carry. What matters is the energy that flows through the network. In this way, offboarding energy storage and generation decouples platform size from performance. This enables a new class of small, inexpensive platforms that still have significant capabilities. These small platforms can have unlimited range, indefinite persistence, and arbitrary amounts of power available for their payloads. 
Quantity coupled with capability provides a means to overwhelm even the most challenging contested environments. Now, full realization of this wireless energy web will be many years in the making. It will take partnerships across the government, academia, and industry. I'm here today to tell you this exciting journey has begun. I welcome your innovative solutions. Please contact me, and we can work together to create a more dynamic energy future. Thank you.